Hello Jazz Tech, this is Ben Medler uh, coming back at you with modal bass lines today. The last video was about B-flat blues bass lines. Um, that's a good way to capture vocabulary and structure on a lot of uh, popular bass players and what they did on most of their tunes. Modal is a different kind of music um, in the respect that you get one chord for a long period of time. So that means that you're generally staying within one scale. Uh, I wrote a, a bass line that is kind of based on a common song called So What? And I just shortened it for the video. So this is going to be four bars of D minor, four bars of D minor, four bars of E flat minor, and four bars, bars of D minor. So this sound... So the scales that go with these are Dorian, meaning that they're built on the second mode of a major scale. So D Dorian belongs to C major, and E flat Dorian belongs to D flat major. So prior to letting your bass players uh, start walking bass lines or creating bass lines, they should be able to play those scales really well for you. Um, so the next step is to talk about uh, where the tension lays, because that's really the name of the game on modal bass playing. So let me play this line for you, and then we'll talk about that tension. Here it goes. Now that modal bass line has a lot of what I would say are left turns or high tension choices in it. Uh, so what I would like to do is now play a modal bass line as fairly consonant so that you can hear the difference. So if I just wanted a lot of D minor sound, I would stick around the notes D, F, and A as the primary sounds. You definitely hear more of that D minor sound when I do that. So one of the choices that you want to start making with your bass players is what kind of music are we playing? Is this modal comfortable, meaning uh, lots of inside harmony? Uh, is it modal adventuresome, which would imply lots of uh, outside harmony? Or does it have both? Uh, for example, maybe it starts inside and goes outside. Those are things that your bass players are going to need to know about because what will happen is if you give them just a set of notes, none of those notes will necessarily um, speak the sound of the chord. And that's really, really important. So uh, I guess what I'm cautioning is uh, a bass player that's really good at their scales is going to want to start playing a lot of adventuresome sounds very quickly. And then you lose the sound of your fundamental harmony, uh, which is very important, especially in modal music. Um, at the beginning of a phrase, it's nice to hear where that harmony is. Okay, let's talk about this line. So the first measure I chose was D, E, F, G. Starts on the D, it sounds like D. Um, it ends on a G, which is not one of the chord tones. So that ends with a little bit of tension. So I would say that it's, this is inside. And then as soon as I hit that G, it lifts the music a little bit which is really important. Um, the next measure, I started on the fifth instead of the root. That creates tension. So it's still familiar to the chord, but we're expecting the D, here comes that A. I go up to the C, and then I chose two open strings, which is really a friendly thing to do for bass players. It resonates the instrument a lot, and in this particular key, they're pretty good notes. So G and D. You'll notice I muted the strings after hitting that open. That's important because otherwise you'll get this. So two measures so far. And then I went back to that A natural because I'm trying to keep the music lifted. So on the third measure I went A to D. 
What if I had gone A to some other notes that were high tension? I might start to lose the sound of that chord. And depending on the kind of music that I'm playing, that may be good or bad. So uh, I brought it right back down to the D and then walked right up the scale. Now we have three bars. Now G, F, G, A is just messing around with the mode that I'm in. So I'm up on that G, which is a tension sound. Back down to the F to solve it, back to the G, and then up to the A to solve it. So I'm just dancing around those chord tones. Here's your first four bar section. I chose to go back down to the D natural just to say we're still in D. This is a clear sound. And I did something that Paul Chambers, the great bassist, uses quite often. So I went D, C, B, B flat, and then to A. So I'm trying to get down to the fifth. D, the root, down to A, the fifth. And I just used a scale to walk there and a chromatic note to fill in that gap chromatic to the A. Okay, and that gives a nice, um, it actually makes it sound like you're heading towards another chord inside of the key when you do that. The next measure I chose A, D, E, F. That's very similar to before, except I used the low A. Those two measures put together, bars five and six. Then I went to that G natural tension line again. G, A, G, F. So messing around between the chord tones, starting on a tense note. And then I went E, D, G, B flat. Three of those notes belong to the key that we're on. E, D, and G. Now the G creates tension, which I did on purpose. And then I used a B flat, which is the fifth of the new key. Now we're on E flat. So the last four bars, uh, bars five, six, seven, and eight. That gets us to the E flat sound now. So we're on the bridge or the second key and I chose E flat, F, G flat, B flat. That's a very consonant inside sound. And I like that when you change keys, and I'm actually quite distracted by um, bass players that want to be adventuresome the second they get to a new key. I really think it needs to settle unless you're on that heightened third chorus of a solo, or it, it really does depend what the soloist is doing, but most soloists would like a little bit of E flat sound underneath. Um, okay, so the next measure, A flat, B flat, E flat, F. So that's a little play on tension release, tension, or tension release, release tension. It's a mirror image. So those two measures put together, bars nine and 10. Now the third measure I chose to start on the third and go down to the root and then back up and then back down. So this is pretty inside. Down to the fifth. And then this was kind of a cool trick. I did F E natural as if we're heading to that E flat again. And then I went to D natural, which is really a nice piece of harmony um, and right up to the G. So here I'm deliberately intending to not sound like D minor. I want the listener to be fooled a little bit. So So that last four that I just went through is root up to a tension G, up to the chord tone A, half step approach, back to the tension G, back to the inside A, inside F, inside D. And then um, walking down again to the A, E to D, A, D, E. So when it's all said and done, the first chorus is fairly inside. The second chorus is a little more adventuresome. The bridge is reliable 
and then starts to get a little shifty towards the end, in which case I do the last four bars with a fair amount of tension. That slingshots the music forward and allows you to set up the next chorus. Here's your uh, um, 16 bars. gives you a nice balance of inside and outside flavors, which is the most important thing when you're doing modal bass lines. Uh, thank you very much. This was Ben Medler and uh, Jazz Tech. See you guys next time.